E aí pessoal, como vocês estão? O dia de hoje é para prestar um tributo à memória do Patrick També, que infelizmente faleceu hoje aos 73 anos. Né? Eu também vinha já lutando contra o mal de Parkinson já havia alguns anos. Ah, também foi um dos pilotos daquela geração francesa que invadiu a Fórmula 1 no finalzinho dos anos 70. E, e tomou parte da categoria até metade dos anos 80 né? Era uma das, uma das grandes promessas do automobilismo francês E o Patrick acabou falecendo hoje Com a idade de 73 anos O, Patrick, a, o cartel do Patrick na Fórmula 1 foi 108 grandes prêmios Teve duas vitórias, as duas pela Ferrari Cinco poles e duas voltas rápidas em seu cartel. A ah, destacar também a ah, sua passagem pela Theodore, McLaren, Ligier, Ferrari, Renault e Lola Haas, onde ele acabou encerrando a carreira posteriormente em 1986 na Fórmula 1. Ah, ainda pela Haas ele tinha já um histórico, né? a Haas e Carl Haas, que tinha a equipe, uma lendária equipe na, na kart, em parceria com o Paul Newman, né? É, ele tinha já uma, uma, um histórico vitorioso na equipe do Carl Haas, na, no, nos tempos da Canam, com títulos, com dois títulos né, na categoria em 1977 e em 1980. É, outro, outro fato talvez o mais conhecido da carreira do Patrick foi que ele acabou sendo convidado a substituir o, o Gilles Villeneuve durante aquela temporada terrível para Ferrari em 82 e ele estava né no grid do do GP da, da Alemanha daquele daquele ano que foi justamente onde acabou acontecendo um acidente que tirou o Didier Pironi da temporada né do restante da temporada e posteriormente tirando as chances da Ferrari conquistar título né o título ali de de pilotos e, e o Patrick acabou ganhando aquela corrida da, na, na Alemanha naquele ano. E tem uma, uma outra prova, que foi a segunda vitória do, do, do Patrick também, que talvez tenha sido a mais, a, a mais legal, a mais emotiva, que foi a conquista do Grande Prêmio de San Marino. É, ele estava, né, para quem conhece bem a história, né, ele estava ali na cola do, do Ricardo Patrese, que na época corria pela Braba, e o Patrese acabou errando uma das curvas, agora não, não me recordar qual delas, um pouco antes da Aqua Minerale, e, e ele acabou, né, o Patrese acabou batendo sozinho, e depois, aí, logicamente, o também acabou assumindo a liderança e vencendo uma das corridas mais emotivas. Eu até destaquei no Twitter a foto né, dessa vitória dele. Para mim foi uma das fotos mais bonitas. Assim, eu gosto bastante ali da década de 80. É justamente essa que foi até fotografada pelo Paul Henri Carrier. Um dos grandes fotógrafos da história da Fórmula 1. Então o que vai ficar para vocês aí é o vídeo justamente dessa vitória dele. No GP de San Marino de 1983, uh, ele pilotando com o carro número 27, do, do seu grande amigo Gil Villeneuve, né? De quem ele tava, acabou aconselhando ir para a Fórmula 1, enfim, deu uma grande ajuda. E por ironia do destino, alguns anos depois ele viria a substituir justamente o Gilles na Ferrari. Então é isso aí, pessoal. Uh, um tributo à memória do Patrick, que nos deixou hoje aos 73 anos. Tá ok? Então curtam aí o grande prêmio da San Marino de 1983. From the Dino Ferrari circuit at Imola in Italy, good afternoon and welcome to the San Marino Grand Prix. René Arnoux on pole position for Ferrari and that has pleased the crowd, the always very pro Ferrari Italian crowd. Nelson Piquet on the outside of row one, Tom Bass, Ferrari and Prost's Renault on row two, Patrese in the second Brabham and Eddie Cheever in the second Renault on row three. Pouring past him, 
It's Ferrari's first and second, it's Renault third and Patrese's Brabham fourth. But Nelson Piquet, the current championship leader, is left on the start line as we have our news Ferrari in the lead and challenging the Tombe Ferrari. That was Riccardo Patrese moving his Brabham into third place. Alain Prost is fourth, De Cesaris is fifth, De Angelis is sixth. The rest of the field pouring through with Nelson Piquet now getting underway right at the back of the field. Nelson Piquet stalled and Arnu pulling away as they come into the chicane just before the start finish line. Arnu pulling out a little bit of a lead now from Tombe. This is the end of the first of 60 laps. Tombe in second place. Patrese, the Italian in the British uh, Brabham with the German BMW engine in third place. The all French team of Prost in the Turbo Renault 4. And still fifth, although falling back, the Turbo Alpha. There it is of De Chesaris. Oh, and we've got a problem there for somebody. That is one of the Renaults, that's Eddie Cheever. And so already on this rather hot day, the notorious unreliability of some of these turbocharged cars has struck. Patrese has got ahead into second, but Arnu the leader. Patrese second for Brabham, Tombe third for Ferrari, Alain Prost fourth in the sole surviving Renault now. Oh, and that's Guerrero off! That was Guerrero, the Colombian driver in the Enzyme, spinning across the grass, and Roberto Guerrero's race is undoubtedly run over the graffiti that has been written on the road by the fans that quite a lot of the slogans this year are about the late Gilles Villeneuve who had his last Grand Prix here this time last year and Patrese lining up now Patrese looking good for the lead this is lap six and now he's having a go on the inside it's under breaking the Brabham's twitching and he's through Riccardo Patrese takes the lead on lap six Arnu fights back but Patrese has gone through Patrese is definitely pulling away. Arnu doesn't seem to be able to do anything at all about it, and all that uh, Patrese must do is drive cleanly. Clearly, his Brabham has the legs of the Ferrari at the moment. Tombe a lot closer now to Arnu, which is interesting. Arnu is now right out of touch with the leader, and certainly Riccardo Patrese. He's only won one Grand Prix before. He had, if you remember, that very lucky win at Monte Carlo last year when he spun in the closing stages. But certainly, Patrese looking more confident than I've ever seen him drive before. And he's gradually building up this lead. That's Arnu. Arnu is coming into the pits. The uh, stopwatch is on. They're putting in the fuel. They're changing the tyres. This is the first routine stop. Very quickly, most of the tyres are done. Off the jacks. The fuel slowed it. The tyres were changed very, very quickly indeed. But after 16 stationary seconds, René Arnu is out. There you see De Cesaris going out of the picture, now in fourth place. So the Ferrari has dropped to fifth. That is a pit stop for Prost. Prost in the pits. Fuel going in. Most of the tyres done. There's a problem with the front left-hand tyre. Now they're all clear. And away he goes. 16.4 seconds for Alain Prost. So Prost is out. This is lap 28 now. So we've had Prost in. We've had Arnu in. We've also got De Cesaris in the pits. Less than four seconds between Patrese and Tombe. And remember, they've both got to make their pit stops. And there could easily be four seconds difference between a perfect pit stop and one that doesn't go quite right. So it could all happen in the pits with Tombe in second place still. Oh, that's Derek Warwick. Derek Warwick has parked the Tolman right on top of the tyres. And he's getting out rather dazed, I think. But he's all right. He's got his steering wheel in his hand. He chucks it disconsolately into the cockpit. And I said that Nelson Piquet was coming through the field. He is indeed. He's going to pass. And uh, De Cesaris up the hill. Piquet goes through. Now that's fifth place. So from 26th place at the start, Nelson Piquet, the man who's currently leading the World Championship, who so desperately wants some more points today, has come all the way through the field into fifth place. 
and that's Tom Bay in, our second place man's in. This is second place in the pits. Once again, it's the field that's the last to be done, and he's away, and the very good stop Tom Bay has managed to come out again, still in second place. And Patrese is in, Patrese is in, and look, he stopped, he stopped too far down. You see the marks on the road where he should have stopped. He stopped several feet ahead of his mark, and there's a problem at the back. He's still not going, they've got a problem on the right rear tyre. It's a slow one for Patrese, 23.3. And that is about eight or nine seconds more than it should have been. And there we have our new leader. Patrick Tombe is in the lead and we have a gap of about six seconds on our unofficial hand timing. And another accident there, just it's uh, Danny Sullivan who's off. And Sullivan is out of the car and obviously unhurt. But Danny Sullivan seems to have buried the Tyrrell right into the accident of uh, the Tolman of Derek Warwick. PK there in the pit lane after that magnificent drive from the back of the field up into fifth place at one point. Little uh, wave of the hands to the mechanics there. And De Cesaris coming in as well. Andrea De Cesaris, who was in fifth place, himself into the pits. Yes, ooh, big problems there. And now all attention on this battle because you can now see both of them in one picture. Riccardo Patrese is closing all the time. This is lap 49. Tombe, who came into the Ferrari team last year, following the death of his friend Gilles Villeneuve and went on to win the German Grand Prix at Hockenheim the weekend when Didier Peroni was so badly injured. That was Tombe's first Grand Prix victory. Last year, of course, we also saw Riccardo Patrese's first Grand Prix victory. That was the Monte Carlo one. So both of these men with just one Grand Prix victory under their belt. But Patrese, no doubt about it, he is the man who is really dominating this race. Oh, what very, very close that time. Is he going to come up the inside? I thought he was going to have a go there. But once again, Tombe takes the line. This is lap 54 of the 60 laps. Up the hill, the Ferrari still has the slenderest of leads. Over the brow, down the hill. Little glimpse there of Nigel Mansour as we wait for them to come into sight. Oh, and he's done it! He's done it! We didn't see it happen! And a great moan from the crowd because Riccardo Patrese, a little twitch there as they go up the hill. But Riccardo Patrese out of our sight somewhere around the tosser corner. Patrese is the new leader for Brabham and Patrick Tombe is demoted with five and a half laps left to go. Patrick Tombe is demoted into second place for Ferrari and that won't please the Italians at all. The new leader, Riccardo Patrese for Brabham. Oh, and he's off! Patrese is off! The new leader of two corners, Riccardo Patrese, in the barriers, coming up. And listen to the roar of the crowd. They've just heard the news over the public address system. Patrese is out of the car. He's unhurt, but he has thrown the race away. And that's Arnu off. That is René Arnu in the other Ferrari. René Arnu, who will just have inherited second place, and he's gone off at the same point. He started it. Is the engine running? The engine is running. And the Ferrari does a U-turn, and René Arnu is back in the race, but he has lost his second place. That's, that's Mansell, Mansell off. The rear wing clearly came adrift on the Lotus at a very awkward moment, breaking hard. There you see it, the wing on the right of the picture bouncing out of sight. And Mansell obviously a bit winded, I think, there, but he looks as though he's more or less in one piece. But that's Mauro Baldi's car, Baldi. About to get a championship point for sixth place. This is the final lap. And Mauro Baldi's Alfa Romeo engine absolutely expires in a great cloud of smoke. Through the smoke comes the red Ferrari of Patrick Tombe on his way now.
This is the final 60th lap of the San Marino Grand Prix. Bad luck for Mauro Baldi. Patrese out. But here is the winner. Patrick Tombe of France in the Italian turbocharged Ferrari. The Ferrari flags wave. Over the start-finish line he goes. And the car spluttering. The car audibly spluttering. Patrick Tombe's car has clearly run out of petrol. So he just made it to the flag. And he's a very wise man to keep his crash helmet on because the Ferrari mad Italian fans are going to get very, very excited. They're clapping him on the back. Look at the Ferrari flags. They're jumping up to get... Oh, I think he's having quite a rough time in there.